Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Stuff About Money podcast. I am your co-host, Eric Garcia, and this is a special mini-series that I am recording with a guest co-host, a friend of mine, Billy Wagner. Don't worry, y'all, Xavier is still with me. Billy owns an insurance agency down in Florida, and we wanted to explore this idea that insurance professionals are givers. My fifth pillar to building financial security is give to others. And Billy and I wanted to have engaging conversations with a diverse group of insurance professionals to hear their journeys of how they're creating legacies for their families and leaving a meaningful impact in their communities through generous acts. And we do all of that in under 12 minutes with each of our guests. So listen in and prepare to be inspired. Uh, so excited to have uh, Chris Paradiso with us uh, today, and we're, we're talking about giving, and we really just want to start out, Chris, by asking you, what's been your inspiration or motivation, you know, that giving spirit that you have, where did it come from? Well, that's a simple answer. Uh, my mom and dad have always been giving people, and even more giving at, when they had their third child, which was uh, a child with born with... Um, intellectual disabilities. So giving has been in our family and the way we were raised um, from being a little kid. So giving back is pretty easy and very selfish because you get a very good feeling on giving back. So I will say, yes, it feels good, but it's very selfish. It's inside, man. You just feel really good when you can, uh, when you can make a difference. So, uh, you, you, so you threw me off, Chris. I was going to ask you our second prescribed question, but tell, can you tell us a little bit more about like that's counterintuitive, right? Giving you're helping someone else, but yet. Well, my so. dad used to say all the time, you know, the greatest gift we can do is give to somebody who can never repay you. And um, so the agency, we've fed uh, many, many, many homeless shelters. And I have to tell you, um, you're never going to get anything back other than pure happiness of knowing that the gift of being able to take care of people. It's, it's very selfish. It's such a wonderful feeling and being able to have some of my teammates experience it. You leave there with such a smile. Um, my son's very first one. I'll never forget. We got in the car and it was in a very bad area, put him in the car, locked the door. We were driving home and he's like, dad, my heart is smiling right now. I'll never forget that quote. It's unexplainable on, on how good you feel when you do that. But these people will never be able to repay us. And that's what makes it even more special. Wow, my heart's smiling. I love that. And I love how you incorporate your kids. So you mentioned homeless shelters. Share with us a little bit uh, of some other causes that you support or maybe some that are more meaningful or purposeful to you. Well, number one, um, Special Olympics. Um, you know, I have broken teeth. I never had them fixed. And my dad used to say, hey, it was because, you know, People used to say the hard work to my sister and, you know, what do you do? You defend and you mm -hmm. fight back. And uh, a lot of emotion comes out of me when, when I hear the R word, which I refuse to repeat. And, uh, you know, nothing more rewarding than having a sister who has special needs, who looks at the world so very differently than you and I. So when people say, you know, it must have been hard. No, it's not hard. It's actually very easy because when you have a sister with uh, special needs, um, you know what you do? You learn to see and understand through love the eyes that she actually looks at things, which is very different. We blow so much out of proportion where she sees no interest and it's not that big of a deal because she comes from it and live, looks in the lens of a very, very, very different eye set. So um you know, number one is Special Olympics. Uh, selfish me loves basketball season starts next week. Um, one of my teammates here at the office, she loved it so much last year. She doesn't even know the rules of basketball, but we go. We spend Saturday afternoon and um, you go home smiling. Um, some of the kids want to sing with me. And yes, I am a terrible singer, but I'm going to sing with them and we're going to have fun. But the experience is it, it's so, so rewarding to me. And actually I think I get way more out of it than they give than, than they get out of it. So special Olympics is number one. Uh, number two is in near and dear to my heart is uh, our veterans phase four uh, of the wall of honor in Stafford Springs. It's a wall that's being built 
Um, we have three of them done, and this is the last phase, and it's going to have names of men and women who serve this wonderful country. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's near and dear in my heart because I get to, I get to spend so much time with my heroes, um, which are the veterans, and um, being able to serve and, and, and really help those in need. Some have Parkinson's d- disease, and others are just really struggling um, emotionally, mentally, and, and financially. So uh, nothing more rewarding than to be able to give back to um, these men and women who, you know, have given us the freedoms we have. So those are the two biggest that I'm, that I back behind today and have been behind and um, for multiple years. And we're just going to keep doing what we need to do to make a difference. And um, selfish reasons, again, um, I get a lot out of giving back um, just tremendous amount uh, relationships and just the really good feeling of knowing that I'm making a difference in, in these people's lives. Yeah. And it's, it's the example that you set, which is, you know, really meaningful. And I love how your stuff is what you're passionate about. And I think that's really, you. I mean, you're passionate about the journey fund and the special Olympics and you're passionate about veterans and that's where you show up the most. And I think that's really great. Uh, I wanted to ask you the next question, which is there anything unique that you learned or experienced as a result of your giving? Uh, every single time it's, it's, it's almost a, um, a question that shouldn't be a question because um, the amount of times I, I whether it's at swimming in Special Olympics or basketball, you know, I leave shaking my head, sometimes crying. What they teach you about life is unexplainable. It's unexplainable. So could I give you an example? I mean, I could give you a hundred examples. Um, you know, just the outlook of life um, one recently passed away. Her name is Chrissy. Uh, she swam, she came from, she actually grew up about, you know, 10 houses up from, from our house. And, um, she, when she got out, this was a couple of years ago. It was so rewarding. She says, you know what? I didn't win, but damn it. I gave it my best shot. And to see the passion of how hard she tried that she won. She didn't come in first. She didn't come in second. She didn't come in third, but she won. You can win without winning. As oxymoronic as that statement is, that taught me a very valuable lesson. You can win without winning. Wow, that is, as as you're saying that, I often think that um, we use the wrong measuring sticks sometimes in life. We do. We absolutely do. And you know what? Because of the lens that we have on our glasses is very different. And Man, all I can say I is, that, uh, yeah, it's that just, it's powerful. Powerful. Yeah, people should sit with that. How do you measure success? How do you measure winning and losing? I'm well, writing a book on it as we oh, speak. Well. And the reason being is, is because, um, you know, there's, there's a way that we look at life and a, a quick example that's in the book is, and, and, the, and if you want to get deep dive into uh, what I'm going to talk about is the infinite life versus the finite life. Simon Simic wrote a book, The Infinite Game. And we all live a finite life, which means it's like a basketball game. We know how many players are going to be out there. We know how much time and we keep score. We know if I score 40 and Billy scores 42 at the end of those minutes, Billy beat me. Hmm. That is an infinite game. But what we don't know is a finite game and a really quick example of, uh, I'm sorry, of the uh, infinite game versus the finite game. Okay, the finite is it. Those are the rules. The infinite is the rules aren't really spelt out like a basketball game. And if if I asked you a question, Eric, and if you don't know the answer, it's okay. I'm not trying to embarrass you. How many people on the American side perished during Vietnam War? Um, like in the seven figure thousand, like in the, the six figure thousands. Close, roughly 58,000. Yeah. One too many. There's no yeah. right answer, but roughly 58,000. How many perished on who we were fighting against? I don't know. 
3 million people died on the other side. On the other side. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So when we talk about who won the war, it all depends on how you're tracking who, how, and what the score of who we won. 3 million to 58,000. Who won that war? But you will read in our history books that we lost. It's because one was playing an infinite game and one was playing a finite game. We played a finite game. They played the infinite game. Until America gets off of our land, we will win, which means there's no end. It's all like, on our perception. I like, of to what tell people, I like to tell people, I said, the story is still being written. The yeah. story is still being written. The, the last yeah. chapter has not has not been penned yet. Correct. So, Chris, our goal is, you know, the insurance professionals are very giving people in general. Uh, we really want to encourage others to to get involved and engage just this this process of giving. Can you give some maybe some advice for those who maybe don't know where to start? They, they're maybe unsure how to engage the process. Yeah. Number one, I would say start with a big picture. And why I say a big picture when people say to me, hey, you like giving in your social media and this and that and the other thing. My goal and our agency's goal is, is how do we recruit the public to get behind the passionate causes that we are, you know, that we really, really, really are passionate about? How do we recruit? I know a lot of agencies like to write a check and they're like, I just, just, I don't want my name out there. I would tell you, you're actually doing harm because if you're passionate about whatever it might be, Special Olympics, writing a check is one thing. Getting involved and recruiting other people to be involved, it's way more powerful and much more beneficial to the charity and even a bigger impact on your life. So I would ask people to reverse engineer what most people do. Agents, and I say this when I speak on stage, there are mo no more giving community than independent insurance agents. And I'll look you dead in the eyes and I'll challenge you. You find a community bigger, better, that does more for small town America. The backbone of communities in America are independent insurance agents. Not arguable. Nobody's ever come to prove and disprove what I firmly feel is a fact. And my only one challenge to people, Eric, is please don't just write the check. The impact is so much more powerful when you truly believe and you have the passion for something to recruit others. Recruit others into that, that inner circle so they can feel that passion that you feel, right? And help them get out and make a difference. And while they're making a difference in having that impact, they're changing their own lives and they don't realize it. So. Once again, I'm going to say I am probably one of the most selfish people around because I get way more out of giving. I love to surround myself with my teammates when we do this and my loved ones and my kids. The impact has been tremendous. And it's been tremendous for the, for the um, whether it's Special Olympics or Phase 4. We raised a tremendous amount of money for Phase 4. Why? Because of the passion, you know. The passion is what bleeds through. So I challenge each and every agent out there, don't just write the check. Don't just write the check. There's more power in your passion and your drive and the impact you're going to have. So please don't just write the check. And when you find something you're passionate about, I find you're more willing to make sacrifices financially, with your time, emotionally, because you're just driven by, by a cause so deeply. Yeah. Chris, thanks. Thanks for taking time and, and sharing that. And, and I, I would add that uh, maybe you don't have to write a big check, but if you fund something that you're passionate about or you're involved in something you're passionate about, just you, you there's so many different ways to inspire and, and to give back um, to people. So thanks for, for, for your time today, sharing your story with us. And I'm looking forward to um, the release of your book. I, I can't wait. I'll just leave you with one last thing my mom used to say. Karma, it never dies. Mm -hmm. All right, my friend. Love Take it. Care. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take All care. Right.